What's going on everybody? Hope you all are having a fantastic day today. Now as you guys can already tell, we're going to go old school with this video and show some World at War gameplay using the Tommy Gun. The steady aim sauce, of course. You guys know how to use the Tommy Gun. This thing is absolutely insane. Drum mag, only hit fire using steady aim. You can actually kill everybody on the lobby and you're going to see in this gameplay how saucy this class actually is in the meta back in the day when it came to Call of Duty World at War. But to be honest with you guys, the real reason that we're watching World at War today is simply because I just haven't been playing Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War because of the main reason that skill-based matchmaking is just ruining my experience with this title. I just haven't been too sweaty lately. You know, I've been more in a casual mindset. I usually switch back and forth depending on how stressful my life is, you know, at the current moment in time. And if it's a little bit more stressful than other times, I'm just not going to be as sweaty as I usually am. I'm going to be more laid back. I'm going to be more casual. My shot isn't going to be as crispy. And the majority of the time, I'm just playing Call of Duty to have fun because that's what I did back in the day. I wasn't really a sweaty player. I mostly just casually played and played a lot of S&D. That's where I got my competitive side. But Domination, TDM, Capture the Flag, game modes like those are the ones that I usually played in. And I didn't really take them too seriously, to be honest with you guys. Back in Call of Duty 4, World at War, uh, Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops 1, a lot of those games I just casually played. You know, I just wanted to have a good time when it came to Call of Duty. My sweaty side just mostly came out during Ghost, and I just started being a little bit more competitive. I got into GBs, I got into competitive play, and that kind of transferred over to pub matches and pub stomping. But the point I'm trying to make here is that skill-based matchmaking didn't ruin my experience back in the day. You know, I could still casually have a good experience when I didn't want to sweat, and if I did want to sweat, I could go to S&D and still have a very competitive match at the same exact time. I could choose, I could pick and choose when and where I want to sweat. But in these more recent video games, that is not an option anymore. You are forced to sweat no matter what. You can't go anywhere, you can't escape the sweat. You are forced to compete with every player every single match. Now some good news has actually released and changed feeds over on Twitter has actually admitted that he does reverse boost and he claims that because of skill based matchmaking that is officially ruining Black Ops Cold War and is taking all the fun out of the video game. This is really big man. Honestly this is insanely big because this is helpful for not just live gameplay channels but for everybody. You know, for the commentary scene, we've been talking about skill-based matchmaking and complaining about skill-based matchmaking for a very long time. It's one of the most annoying features for a lot of players. It kind of kills off the fun and makes the game, like I said in the beginning of this commentary, way too competitive. And you guys, the live gameplay channels, the people who give the most positive feedback for this video game, and also Activision does tend to your guys' side a lot more than the negative commentary channels. If you guys don't admit to these things and stand up and talk against these things... They're not going to change anything, but having names like you guys, a more positive side of Call of Duty, can hopefully boost the skill-based matchmaking topic a little bit further, and maybe Activision will understand and possibly tone it down. And it's even better because under this tweet here, a lot of other gameplay channels are coming out and saying that they reverse boost too. Everybody's coming out and giving the good news. And once again, nobody hates you for this. You're not even going to lose any viewers. I guarantee you're not going to lose any people because you just said that you reverse boost in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Because everybody hates skill-based matchmaking. Nobody's going to be like, oh my god, he reverse boosts, all he does is verse bots. Like, nobody thinks you're bad players. You know, everybody clearly knows you guys are good, competent players, and if you're going to go and play in regular skill-based matchmaking, you would be able to get streaks. But the rate that you guys are dropping nuclears and getting streaks back to back to back to back to back with insanely high KDs and professional players can't even average a good game out of Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War is a little suspicious. And all you had to do was just fess up. But everybody finally is, and this is amazing news because now we can finally move on to the next step of handling skill-based matchmaking in Call of Duty video games. Skill-based matchmaking is definitely a topic that needs to be discussed. It's something that is hated throughout the whole community, regardless of what type of content creator you are, or even if you're a casual player, you do not enjoy skill-based matchmaking. It's bad for getting gameplays for live gameplay channels. It's bad for commentary channels because all it does is give us negative and stressful content to talk about. It's something that needs to be fixed in Call of Duty, and Activision just simply isn't going to do this. So to be honest with you guys, I think everybody should just reverse boost. I've been telling people this for a very long time. It's something that should have been done in the past, and it's the only way that you could possibly fight back against skill-based matchmaking. But the only thing holding a lot of us back is the live gameplay channels, trying to prove that all of their gameplays are legit, and giving a false image to a lot of these other Call of Duty players, because now, they're thinking that these players are, you know, absolutely outstanding, and they're doing this legit. That means they have to do it legit, when in reality, these gameplay channels aren't. They're reverse boosting to get easier lobbies to get these gameplays. And now that these live gameplay channels are finally being a little bit more open with their communities, now a lot more people in the Call of Duty community are going to understand 
that the skill-based matchmaking in this game is just simply thick. There's no way around it. And we as the community know there's only one way to convince Activision to change the skill-based matchmaking in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War and all Call of Duty video games to be exact. And that is by removing the money that they earn from the Call of Duty franchise. You see, you could complain, you could whine, you could rant, you could make videos, you could do whatever you possibly want to try to get in Activision's head. But as long as they're making money from this video game, they think everything is alright. To be honest with you, they probably don't even see more than half the stuff that the internet says about skill-based matchmaking and this video game. They could probably give two craps about what we have to say. So the only way we can get in their heads is by affecting the cash flow of Call of Duty. Now there's two ways of doing this. The first way is just simply don't buy this video game. But that's going to be an impossible task. There's no possible way that you can get that word around to everybody to not purchase the video game. And I would like to mention this again. We don't make up the mass majority of Call of Duty. Which is going to lead into the point number two. Is to ruin the casual player's experience. I know this sounds pretty harsh, and it sounds pretty mean to try to ruin a lot of the casual players' fun when it comes to Call of Duty, but it's the only way to get them to remove skill-based matchmaking, to make sure that connection is the priority number one when it comes to gaming, and that we aren't stressing like it's a CDL match every single game we play. As you guys know, there's a massive majority of players out there who don't watch YouTube, who don't watch Twitch, don't watch commentary channels, don't watch live gameplay channels, aren't informed about Call of Duty or what Activision is doing to this title. They just gladly buy Call of Duty on a year-to-year -year cycle because they just want a casual game to hop back on and play once a month, once every two months, once even every three months. People who don't play this often, that's Activision's main priority because to be honest with you guys, they are the easiest to get the money out of because they don't care what Call of Duty is going through. They'll hop on once a month and they'll see a cool skin in the store and they're probably working class people, they're working long hours, they're tired and they earn their money. So they're going to go ahead and say, you know what, I'm going to purchase this, I'm going to treat myself to a skin or treat myself to a weapon of some sort and they're going to purchase stuff out of the store and that's who Activision cares about. Now in order to get everybody to complain about this video game, we have to tap into that player base. And the only way to tap into that player base is by reverse boosting. I know there's a lot of casual players or players learning to play Call of Duty who are probably thinking this is an awful idea because you guys think I'm going to ruin your experience, but I'm not talking about you guys. If you play Call of Duty three, even four times a week for even just 30 minutes a session, that's fine. You still play Call of Duty, you're still used to Call of Duty, and you enjoy Call of Duty. I am literally talking about the people who might play this game once or twice a month. These players make up a massive majority, more than all of us combined. And the only way to get to these players is by reverse boosting, because typically these players aren't the best. Like I said, they're just simply not gamers. They don't care about video games. They just own a console to have something to distract them every once in a while, but the majority of their time is spent doing other things. They might have other hobbies, other things in life that they want to do. They don't care that much about gaming like the majority of us. So when they go ahead and play, they verse other people who are exactly like them. Carefree, don't care about gaming, aren't sweating, aren't trying. It's just a game in their heads. Those type of players could care less who wins, who loses, what's going on in the match. You see, that's what makes a massive difference between those players and the new players, like a lot of the people who watch my content who are trying to learn to play Call of Duty, because at least you guys want to win. You know, you guys have an objective in your head, you see what you have to do, whether you have to get more kills, whether you need to get strong streaks, whether you have to capture objectives, you know what to do and you know how to win. And obviously you're trying to win, so they put you in a different bracket. They can completely see that through the skill-based matchmaking patent, which specifically makes sure that each and every detail of your gameplay is tracked so they can find individuals who play exactly like you. And the skill-based matchmaking protects the other style of players because they don't care about winning. They don't care about playing. They don't care about the objective. They're literally hopping on for one match, 10 minutes, for literally one month, just to have a little distraction for 10 minutes of their life. Maybe their kids are annoying them. Maybe they're annoyed about their job. Something's going on. Just a quick 10 minute session. And then two months down the road, maybe they'll hop on the game again. These are the players I'm talking about. They are protected heavily in this game. And if we can reverse boost, and honestly, I know it sounds bad, I know it sounds bad, but if we can reverse boost and just stomp out some of these lobbies, get them irritated, then they will start complaining. And at that point, we will have the whole Call of Duty community complaining about their video game. And at that point, that's when it will cost Activision a lot of money, because once those extremely, and I mean extremely, extremely casual players start dropping off, and they stop buying this game, religiously, because once again, like I said, these players don't care about the news, these players don't care about the reviews, they don't care about what people have to say on YouTube or Twitch, they simply don't care. They see a new Call of Duty game coming out, they buy it, that's their mindset, they just simply don't care what's going on. So once they stop buying it, 
then it's left up to us, the people who actually do care about purchasing this title. And if we say no, Activision screwed. The Call of Duty community is completely screwed over, and at that point, Activision will be forced to remove skill-based matchmaking to allow these casual players to be able to go back into normal matchmaking and to allow us, the people who do enjoy playing Call of Duty often, we will be able to find more casual games. Of course, it's not always going to be casual. Uh, there's always going to be sweat. Don't get me wrong, that's how it's always been in COD. But the best part about Call of Duty is the satisfaction of feeling rewarded after sweating for so long. Just having at least that one good game that night, that completely made your day, that gave you that rush, getting all your streaks, having intense moments, having fun in Call of Duty, that's gone now. You don't. You no longer get that lucky one match <laughs> anymore. It's constant sweat. Every game is competition. Every game you're trying your hardest. You can't go for high streaks. Even players like myself, I'm holding a 2KD. I have to dumb down my streaks or I'll never get streaks. Things like the War Machine, Chopper Gunners, things I like to pub stomp with. I won't find that one occasional game, that one rare sighting game that will just come across and give me noobs that I can finally use those streaks on. It'll never happen, so I just permanently turn them off. I literally use low tier streaks because I know for a fact I'm never going to find those noobs. I'm constantly going to compete with other players in my skill level. And just like in GBs, just like in competitive play, wager matches where you're actually playing for money, nobody runs high streaks because we know that we're all competent players. We know we're all good players. Everybody runs low streaks. That's what Call of Duty is turning into, guys. That's what Call of Duty is turning into. A competitive shooter with literally no casual side to it. This has to change. Now, this is how you can go about reverse boosting and getting into these lobbies. Now, if you guys haven't noticed already, you can go like five, six games straight of reverse boosting by just killing yourself over and over again or running around, shooting at the air, lowering your accuracy, lowering your KD, and dumbing down your stats to go ahead and get you into easier lobbies. But that technique doesn't really get you into the super, super, super casual game modes. The best way to do so is to have two different PlayStation accounts or two different Xbox accounts or having a, you know, a PC, Xbox accounts, whatever it is, you need two different games to be on at the same exact time, a bot account and your main account. And with this bot account, you go ahead and join into a lobby. And because of skill based matchmaking, it will see that you're an absolute bot. You barely ever play. You barely have any kills. You're brand new to the franchise and they'll put you up with the same exact players. People who are brand new to the franchise, barely any kills, who don't care about winning, just casually playing. And then what you do is you session join onto that bot, so you get into that skill based matchmaking algorithm, and then you just kick the bot out of the game, you have an easy lobby right there. Easy as that. Now me personally, I don't reverse boost just yet, I want to, but I don't have the account, I don't have my PlayStation with me at the moment, and I want to make a video on this, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit more in detail when I finally do get to go around to reverse boosting. But this is how you guys do it. If you guys really want to get down into it, if you guys really want to try to make a change, remove skill-based matchmaking from Call of Duty, go ahead and give it a try. If you have more than one account or more than one console, try to reverse boost and see if you can get into these lobbies. And if you can, then by all means, let's try to make a difference with Call of Duty. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like. And by all means, if you hate it, leave a dislike. Also, if you're brand new and enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification button. Also, if you want to chat with me, there's two ways to do so. I have a Twitter and a Discord. Both those links are down in the description. And if you want to catch me with live streams of video games, I do that over on Twitch. Link to that is in the description as well. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in. See you on the next one. Peace out.